When I was a young woman, 27 years old, I'd been married for about eight years to my high school sweetheart. We had two young children and very unexpectedly at 49, my mother was diagnosed with very aggressive breast cancer and a couple of years later, she came and lived with us to spend her final months and she died at home. That was before hospice was there and um, it was a long trial, it was very difficult. Three months later, my then husband decided to leave. He had a girlfriend um, in Paris that I obviously didn't know about, and so here I was left alone with two young children. My mom had passed away, and I sunk into a loneliness that I didn't know anybody could survive. I never knew that you could experience such emptiness and hopelessness, um, especially when you have two beautiful children and family around you. But I would find myself in the corner of my bedroom at all different times of the day wondering how I was going to live, how I was going to survive. My heart felt like it had, someone had ripped it out through my throat. It was just a physical pain that was unbelievable. And I remember specifically a real turning point from me. I was driving down Jefferson coming under the um, Vista Bridge and I looked at and all of a sudden this man jumped off the bridge and he landed in front of my car and I had been not contemplating suicide but feeling like that might be my only way out and away from this incredible pain that I was experiencing and as I sat there in the car thinking about this man's family and what that meant that he had just ended his life in such a dramatic way. I knew that never again could I do that. And I cried out to God that he was the only one that could help me to lift me up out of the mire and the, the emptiness that I felt. My desire to share my life with someone and have a family and raise my kids up as a family was so strong. And in the most amazing of ways, God answered my prayer. I was down at an athletic club and uh, this man was walking in front of me and he had mud all over his legs and I made a smart remark about how it must be raining. Eight weeks later, my dear husband Eric asked me to marry him. As we went along, things were going really well and there weren't really any, any traumas or any challenges. I started leaning on my own strength and on my own power and on my own abilities to take care of things. My God, who was my friend and my savior and my constant companion, started to shift in the pursuit of earning lots of money and being at the top of the sales list and um, being highly respected amongst my peers and my customers began to be the focus of what my life was. If I was not so scared of being broken. But at the end of 2004, my back pain had become so severe that I was not able to get in and out of my car. Any meetings that I had to go to, I was laying down. I was taking a lot of pain medicine. I needed help and relief, so surgery was recommended. In 2004, I went in for back surgery at uh, the end of December and that surgery went horribly wrong. As I went into the next summer, I couldn't walk, I couldn't get out of bed, the pain was excruciating. I was on 80 milligrams of morphine, and for people who don't know, that is a lot of pain meds. My, I remember standing on the deck and revisiting my promise to never think that suicide was an option and calling Eric on the phone and asking him to come home. I was in so much pain, I didn't know what I was gonna do. I just wanted relief. One of the biggest areas of growth for me, and really one of the most challenging, was um, giving up so much of who I'd become. I had identified myself as a runner. I was always in really good shape. I was the mom and the wife and the housewife and the volunteer that could do it all. And all of a sudden, I'm the woman that's in bed, not able even to walk around the block, can't fix dinner, can't get the laundry in and out of the washer and dryer. The whole load of everything that I had identified myself was on my husband. I couldn't run, 
I finally, it took me six months to be able to walk two blocks. I still can't do much more than that. But through that process, I began through hours of laying in bed recovering and hours of trying to go back to my original life. God began the process of honing me and changing me and causing me to grow. I kept hearing him speaking into my ear. It is not about what you do that makes you valuable. It's about who you are. It's about what you contribute to this world because of me. It's what you do, Dana, as a representative of my body that matters. 